I'm Dr. Margaret Lafferty, live from the 2017 Hot Topics in Neonatology meeting here in Washington, D.C. I'm with Dr. Joyce O'Shea, and we're here to talk about her talk on video laryngoscopy to teach neonatal intubation. Welcome, Dr. O'Shea. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Um, Dr. O'Shea, can you tell us the major objectives of your talk? Um, so we conducted a trial to answer the question, could video laryngoscopy help teach intubation? Um, we know that learning and teaching intubation is a, is a difficult thing, um, and we know that success rates are, are falling. And one of the big challenges when you're trying to learn how to intubate is that the trainee, when they're looking in the baby's mouth, um, they can see a view of the airway, but they can't share that with the supervisor mm -hmm. who's standing next to them. Mm -hmm. But video laryngoscopy can, can help with that. Um, so essentially, we asked if um, would intubation success rates increase if a trainee supervisor was able to share their view on a video laryngoscope screen sure. and guide based on the images that they saw. How did you design your study? So it's a randomized controlled trial. We used what, prospective and retrospective consent, infants for any infant within NICU who was intubated orally during the study period. There was a, a few small exclusions and the intubators were inexperienced trainees, basically trainees starting out in their first six months. Okay. Um, they all intubated um, using direct laryngoscopy um, but using a video laryngoscope and in the intervention group the screen was visible um, to the supervisor, mm -hmm. whereas in the control group the, the screen was covered. Okay. And the primary outcome then was first attempt intubation success. Okay. And can you tell us your results? So, surprisingly enough, <laughs> um, <laughs> if the supervisor is able to see the screen, it mm -hmm. significantly increases the success rate. I think success rates overall were about 60% in the in intervention group compared to about 40% in the control group. Mm -hmm. If there was pre-medication given first, if there were an elective intubation, that success rate went into the 70s. Uh, in the control group, it was in the 50s, which is it, it's pretty high compared to, to, to other studies out there. If there wasn't pre-medication given first, the success rate in the intervention group was still higher, um, but not significantly overall, but the, the numbers were smaller in that group. All right. And um, based on your study, where would you say we go from here? Um, I think this is a good technique that we should be using. There is challenges in that most of the video laryngoscopes that are available aren't exactly the same as the direct ling laryngoscopes mm -hmm. we're using and mm -hmm. I think it's necessary that if we teach using this technique that it's a directly translatable um, skill that we teach and we don't really at this time want to teach video laryngoscopy. We want to, they need to be able to perform direct laryngoscopy and intubate based on that. So it would be nice to see if the machines became a bit more similar to what we actually want. Absolutely. Um, we have done work looking at um, what the, you know, the, the registrar's opinion was mm -hmm. of this and it was very well accepted. Um, we also found that they very much appreciated a a controlled approach, a, a standardized approach for, for being being taught. We were very careful that the intervention and the control group would get everything else the same otherwise. So we, we put a lot of effort into making sure that they got the same advice and they loved it. Um, we have then looked a little bit about um, if intubations are unsuccessful, why is that? We recorded a lot of a, a lot of intubations, so we had a lot of data to look at. Um, and we found, I guess, what you, you might think is that um, Often, when the trainee is looking, they're not they're not sure what they're looking mm -hmm. at. Um, so I think that can help with um, education. Um, but yes, I think watch this space. There's more to come. That's great. Thank you very much, Dr. O'Shea. That's a wrap from the 2017 Hot Topics in Neonatology meeting here in Washington, D.C.